-hmm. where that metal ring is relative to some of the other stuff. And so in this view, it looked to me about the best view to figure out where we need to put that stem. Now, I think it looks like the tail of that water is slipping a little bit with their valve opening. Is that, is that true or false? No, it just, it's, it, it may be, it's hard to say, but, it, and it could be just the flow that's pulling that up. Okay. So, so, and so now let me show you. So then we, so now we have our landmarks, and, and again, what we're going to do is our, we're going to base the placement of the stem on our landmarks, not what we see angiographically, not where we see the contrast. So if I go in now with a, uh, let's see here with uh, these are different views of the same thing So this right here these two markers are our angioplasty balloon And I wanted to we have different lengths of stent and this I used this to figure out what length of stent we needed That's a 15 millimeter balloon. We ended up using a 16 millimeter stent and then I believe well, no, we're still left with that again um, So then this is the first shot after we put the stent in and I pulled the wire back to um, and this almost certainly is getting popped up by the valve leaflets. But you can see at the bottom part of here how this tapers in a little bit, right mm -hmm. where that... So even though I expanded that to about 300 pounds per square inch of pressure, and it was fully expanded all the way along, it did recoil a little bit. And that's not a big deal. Um, but what, what you'll see then next is we needed to deal with this stuff up here. And... Um, and so actually what I ended up doing was taking this catheter out and getting a second catheter to come in here gently. Um, and, and now that that left main's open, it'll be easy for us to get a catheter in there. So, so you were able to go down by the valve with a catheter? Yep. The, so the, then, the so then okay. so let's see, that's a different view of the same thing, different view of the same thing. Now here's my catheter coming down into the left main. And you can see that this, this the vein graft doesn't really want to fill backwards because there's there are tight areas of narrowing in through here. And so once we got the um, the scent in there, now all of a sudden, well, you don't see it in this view, but in this view, you'll see. Now look at this, look how quickly that fills. Everything fills back. This The vein graph fills all the way back here up to the origin. It comes out the aorta now. So that's why I say in some ways, this is like you got belt and suspenders. That, that, through both the graph, that the blood flow through there is normal, and the blood flow through here, although that orifice size isn't perfect, there's nothing there that's even remotely restricting the blood flow. So, again, I didn't want, because historically in the setting of run-of-the-mill cholesterol plaque, vein grafts don't last more than 10 to 20 years, I didn't want you depending on that. I just wanted to do what we could to make sure that regardless of what happens with that graft, you know, this should be mm -hmm. okay through here. Oh, and then this, I think, is one other view of that right here. Do you see that very often where it'll feed backwards up the loop instead of... That, that, that seems almost counterintuitive that it would feed from the valve or well, from the coronary well, so, up the gap. Yeah, but what we end up doing is we inject, not forcefully, but, but we certainly... I mean, we displace the blood. And if there's enough pressure there, it'll displace that blood all the way back up. So it, again, mm -hmm. the, the goal is to to okay. to look at this area here to make sure that we've got a good so, result. So you're not just letting the it's not trickling in. It's a, you're a, pushing yeah, it. that's okay. right. All yeah, right. and that's and that's the concept. That's how we image it okay. um, by displacing the blood, which doesn't absorb X-rays, but the contrast absorbs it. That's why.